Hello everyone, welcome to day 6, 15th of January, we could challenge and today's question is a simple question. The question says you need to identify the kth largest element in the array. We will be solving this using multiple approaches today and let's get started. So let me just add the slideshow here. And the first one, the basic one uh, that comes to your mind, what you need to do, you need to identify the kth largest element in an array. The array is not sorted. Sort the array, find out the uh, kth largest element. What is the index of the kth largest element? It is pretty simple. Uh, total length minus k. Let's walk through an example. Uh, this is an array given to us 2, 1, 3, 8, 9. And for the first step that you need to do uh, is to sort the array. The sorting time complexity is n log n for the, for the sorting part. For the sorting part. And the, new, the array after the sorting becomes 1, 2, 3, 8, 9. You need to identify uh, the second largest element. The second largest element would be given by the length minus 2. Uh, that means uh, the total length here in this case is 5 minus 2, 3. Uh, the third index would give you the uh, kth second largest element in the array in this case, which is your kth largest element. Had it been uh, k equals to 3, then what you would have done? 5 minus 3 is 2. And this would have been your index. 3 would have been your answer in that case. And you would have got 5 minus 2 is 5 minus 3 is 2 and this is one way to solve this question fair enough just the brute force uh, algorithm that you could think of in an interview how can we improvise this the interview definitely asks you to improvise on this come up with another approach uh, the another approach is a max heap approach uh, we'll be using a priority queue uh, i mean priority queue of a size of size k so what we are targeting here we are targeting in reduction of the processes that we are doing uh, on our uh, array. So what we'll do, uh, we will define a priority queue of size k with minimum queue logic, min queue, min heap logic. And what does the min heap says? Every time you pull out elements from the array, you get the minimum out of it. So if there are 10 elements in your priority queue, you'll always get the minimum element out first. And what remains in the array is the uh, larger, large elements than your minimum elements. So all the elements that are greater than your minimum element stays and you pull out the minimum element from the array. And so what, what does the approach says? You keep on adding elements in the priority queue. At any point if the size becomes greater than k, remove elements from it. Let's walk through this. So k in this case is 2. So you added 1. Then you have you iterate, iterate over the array then you get 1. Then again you iterate over the array, you are at 3. And at point 3, you observe that uh, the size is greater than 2. What you need to do? You remove the topmost element from the priority queue. It being the minimum priority queue, 1 gets removed. 1 is gone. Then you add 8. So you added 8 again. The size become again become greater than k. Uh, what you'll do? Uh, you'll pop out elements from the priority queue. The minimum element is 2. 2 gets removed. You again iterate through the array. You add 9. And what is the minimum element? Minimum element is 3. So 3 gets removed. What remains in the priority queue is 8, 9. Uh, what you will do? You simply return the topmost element of the priority queue. So uh, priority queue dot peak will give you the answer. What is the time complexity of this approach? It's k log k. We are, so what we are achieving by using this approach, we are sorting uh, the elements uh, over the size k rather than over the size n. The complexity reduces from n to k. So it would be actually n times log k. I uh, mistakenly wrote it this way. To, it would be n times log k because you are iterating over all the elements of the input array. And what you are maintaining is the uh, minimum heap of size k. So it would be n log k instead of k log k. Sorry for the typo. Let's move on to the third approach. So third approach is the quick sort approach. What we say, what, what we say is quick select approach. Uh, in this approach, uh, the basic idea is to identify the pivot index. And at the pivot index, the behavior is something like this. All the elements on this on the left side of the pivot index are lower than the pivot index and all the elements on the right side of the pivot index are greater than the pivot index. So you need to keep on sorting the array 
till the time your pivot index doesn't becomes equal to the length minus k which is your uh, which is your length minus k is the index that you need to check actually check uh, such that uh, such that uh, all the elements on the left part of the pivot index on the left part of the pivot index are great are less than k less than the pivot index and all the elements on the right part are greater than the pivot index so these would be greater than pivot index and this would be less than pivot index something like this and once we have uh, that pip, that element uh, which is at uh, length minus k you return that element also you don't need to make sure that these elements are internally sorted within themselves and not these elements it should be the case that uh, they can be distributed they can be uh, they can be uh, unsorted all the elements in the left part can still remain unsorted we just need to make sure that all the elements at the uh, that are lower than that of the pivot index which is the index that we are searching for length minus k and all the elements uh, to the right of it are greater than uh, the pivot index they can they can be unsorted remain unsorted within themselves so this is a standard approach or quick select the best case would be order of n uh, for this algorithm and the worst case would be order of n square it all depends on your algorithm how you select your pivot index uh, i'll talk about it in more detail once i code it so going to the coding part of it so today i'll code all the three solution that i talked about in the presentation starting with the first one the first one is a simple one array is dot sort uh, you will sort the array and you will return nums of nums dot length as we talked about minus k because we are interested in the k's largest index. So trying this up, it looks good. This works. So let me just comment it uh, over here. So let me just So this is part one of the solution and let's write create a duplicate method time complexity let me just write the time complexity for the sake of completeness n log k n log n and let's use the second approach the priority k approach and what we are going to do we will define a priority k integer pq new priority queue and the size is of k i'll simply add elements to it pq dot offer pl and as soon as the size of pq becomes greater than k i'll pop out elements in this we will maintain that the size is never x goes beyond k and once we are done we will return pq dot p let's try this up quickly yeah looks good accept it looks great time complexity would be equal to n log k because uh, the priority key size is of log k, uh, k size and n is the number of elements that we have in our input array so two approaches done the third approach is left which is the quick select approach defining the lower bounds integer start equals to zero integer end equals to nums dot length minus one integer index that we are interested in nums dot length minus k and let's iterate through the this the, this element or uh, till the time array is less than equal to end what i'm gonna do i'll partition the array and i'll define a partition method which will take in two parameters three parameters nums start and end and if my partition index so let's call this partition index turns out to be equal to the index that i'm interested in I'll simply return that element at that index that will be an answer otherwise if 
partition index is greater than index that means uh, we have found out a partition index that is greater than uh, the actual in index that we are searching for i'll reduce the endpoint uh, the end terminal partition index minus index minus 1 otherwise what would be the case i'm just writing a verbose code here if it is less than k then i'll increment the start point partition index plus one and once we are done uh, if we don't find uh, an element uh, which is the k largest element in the array for any uh, incorrect case where k is too large for something we'll just return nums or start looks good to me and let's write the partition method so before writing that let's like a swap method because it will be helpful for us uh, in later in the code so uh, this is a swap method which is basically swapping the ith and the kth uh, ith and the th element in the input array if i is not equal to j integer temp equals to nums of i nums of i equals to nums of j and nums of j equals to temp standard way of writing a swap element swap operation and then now let's write the partition helper method so as discussed it takes in nums integer low integers end let's define let's take the pivot element you can take any element by of your choice but let me just take it at the high point oh it's low i i'm just using different variable names i equals to low and in this j equals to i while i is less than j while i is less than nums of length and nums of i is less than nums of pivot less than equal to nums of pivot i plus plus so here we found out the point uh, till the time uh, the elements on its left are lower than uh, the pivot element we keep on updating i uh, i think i made a mistake that it could lead to uh, the out of bound exception it has to be less than j similarly till the time i is less than j and nums of j is greater than equal to nums of pivot element we keep on updating j and once you found found out the two potential candidate for the swap you swap i comma j and when we are done with this we swap nums of i with the pivot element and we return the partitioning element becomes i so this looks good to me and let's try this up this is standard way of writing the quick uh, select algorithm or the quick sort algorithm uh, it has these three components in it looks good and let me just sum it this accepted uh, the time complexity depends on the way you are selecting your pivot element in this case i am selecting it to be always the last element in the the highest end point in the in the array and the worst case could be of order of n square uh, and where mostly all the elements are sorted and you have to iterate uh, all the elements on left and right side to actually find a potential candidate for the swap if that is the case then uh, the complexity would be worst case complexity is order of n square otherwise uh, the best case would be order of n uh, thanks for watching the video hope you enjoyed it